Hello and welcome to Church to You, the online service of the Church of England in Muggle and Melling. My name is Reverend Janice Hill and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our time together today. No real notices, just to say Gordon continues to do his first communions. Um, he was at St Thomas last week, he's done St Andrews, so still at St Peter's and St James to go. Uh, I began my farewell tour last week. Oh gosh, I'm going to be a wreck at the end of this. It was lovely and sad in equal measure. It was gorgeous. So thank you to the people of St James for the service last week. I don't think there's any other notices. I hope you have a great day um, and enjoy our time together. Take care. God bless. Bye. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Time of Confession Come Holy Spirit of God and search our hearts with the light of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. The Collect Prayer for today. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians 8 verses 7 to 15. You are so rich in all you have, in faith, speech and knowledge, in your eagerness to help and in your love for us. And so we want you to be generous also in the service of love. I'm not laying down any rules, but by showing you how eager others are to help, I'm trying to find out how real your own love is. 
You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, rich as he was, he made himself poor for your sake, in order to make you rich by the means of his poverty. My opinion is that it is better for you to finish now what you began last year. You were the first not only to act, but also to be willing to act. On with it then, and finish the job. Be as eager to finish it as you were to plan it, and to do it as you were as you are now. If you are eager to give, God will accept your gift on the basis of what you have to give, not on what you haven't. I am not trying to relieve others by putting the burden on you, but since you have plenty at this time, it is only fair that you should help those who are in need. Then, when it is you that is in need, and they have plenty, they will help you. In this way, both are treated equally. As the scripture says, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The reading is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the syn synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Telitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the one living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our Gospel reading just now reminds me of the popularity of Jesus. Crowds following him everywhere. A bit like a first century superstar. So here he was surrounded, as we are told at the beginning of our reading. And why? Well, I suspect there were, as his popularity had gone sky high, there were people waiting to see what next incredible act was about to unfold. What would Jesus do next? And so the crowds, there were people waiting for a miracle. And of course, they were not disappointed. We know the story of Jairus' daughter and the woman who touched Jesus after suffering terribly for over 12 years so well. It's well known to us from our Sunday school days and so well known that we find both Matthew and Luke make reference to it in their Gospels. But back to Mark's Gospel. Mark had some incredible stories of Jesus' healing power. Healing the man with the paralysed hand, the man with the evil spirits, and healing the sick in generous heart, and of course Simon's mother-in-law, to mention just a few. And as we are told in chapter 1, Jesus healed many who were sick and drove out many demons from many people. The power of our Lord in healing those who came to him for a variety of reasons. Some came in faith, some came because maybe they wanted to see what had happened. Some maybe came in hope. 
And hope is a special kind of word. We all have hopes in our lives. We may hope for good health. Maybe we hope for a better job where we may find financial stability in our lives. And we may be hopeful that England will win the European Championships that is happening at this moment in time. Hope is a staple word in our directory. I just hope for St Helens to continue to be the best rugby league team. We all have hopes. One of my favourite streets in Liverpool is Hope Street, a street that joins together at one end the Anglican Cathedral and at the other end the Roman Catholic Cathedral, both buildings being beacons of hope to Christians not only in our city but to many thousands that have walked from one to the other. And over the next few months we will see changes in our churches. Both Janice and myself retire from ministry in Magull and Melling. And you may wonder what the future will look like. Who will be your new rector? Who will take over Third Age Ministry? Who will join Simon and Gordon as your priests? There have been and will be more discussions by our church councils about the future and what it will be. And you may hope for this to happen, or for that to happen. And you will, I hope, and importantly pray for an end to any uncertainty that an interregnum may bring. This time of change, and look to the future in expectant hope and faith. And like those early followers of Jesus, we do move forward in faith and hope to see what the future will be. Hope and faith. We don't have all the answers as to what the future will be. I certainly don't. But it's important that we come together as Christians in Magull and Melling as we look to the future. Our reading is full of faith and hope in the power of Jesus. And my prayer as we move forward over the coming months is that we too move forward in faith, in hope, in love and in stability. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray for the church. We pray for our bishops, Paul and Bev, especially Bishop Bev, as she prepares for her sabbatical. We pray for all involved in ministry in your church, especially remembering those recently ordained priest and those who will be shortly ordained deacon. We pray that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, you will bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. We pray you will give wisdom to all in authority we pray for our government in this country and governments across the world as they face this global pandemic. We pray you will direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. We pray for those parts of the world that are affected by war and conflict. We pray for those places where there is little food or shelter. And we pray for the agencies seeking to bring relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray you will give grace to us, to our families and friends and to all our neighbours. And in a moment's quiet now, just picture those people who live on your street. Pray for each one of them.
So we pray for all of those who live, work, visit Magol and Manning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray, Lord, you will comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. And in a moment's quiet, I ask you to remember now those known to you who are in need of prayer this day. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will meet each one at their point of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have been bereaved, especially remembering those who are facing the anniversary of the loss of a loved one. We ask you, Lord, to comfort them at this time. May they know your presence with them in the days and weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now rejoicing in the fellowship of St Andrew, St James, St Peter, St Thomas, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this time of worship. 
and I do hope that the week ahead will be a good one for you and that you will know God's blessings each day. And with that in mind, may the Lord bless us and guard us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and all who we love and give us his peace. Amen.